to Michael Burgess, Republican from Texas, chairman of the Subcommittee on Health, and is the longest serving doctor in Congress. Nice to see you, sir. Well, thanks for having me on, Greta. Congratulations on your new time slot and, and location. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, uh, it's, uh, it's really exciting. It's an adventure for me. Um, I, I want to talk to you about this yeah, about here. <laughs> Is, um, Senator McConnell says that it's going to be all Republican. And the first thing I think of when I hear that is I, I go back to 2009 when Democrats passed Obamacare straight along party lines. If it's going to be straight along party lines now in the flip direction, um, isn't that a recipe for disaster? Well, of course, as you'll recall, the, the Democrats did have 60 votes in the Senate when they sent their bill on Christmas Eve over to the House to Nancy Pelosi, and then did have to do some some fix-it stuff, which they did through reconciliation. Reconciliation is always likely to be a one-party only exercise. So the policy part of Obamacare was all one party, and then the fix-it part was all one party, and they weren't interested in anything that we had to say at that time because our numbers were so low. The, the reconciliation bill that will be required to take away some of the major portions of the Affordable Care Act will be a, a partisan exercise. It is a budgetary, uh, a budgetary vehicle, and as a consequence, no, no Democrat is likely to vote for a Republican. Budget, so no Democrat is likely to vote for reconciliation. There will be portions then that are tackled administratively after the reconciliation bill, and then it is my hope that the larger policy parts, which will take some time afterwards, will in fact be bipartisan because of the big policy things that I've seen happen in, in health policy since the time I've been in Congress. Uh, the stuff that's bipartisan is what's enduring. The mere fact that the Affordable Care Act is in trouble is the fact that it was a single party exercise. A year and a half ago, I passed a major, a major Medicare reform to repeal the sustainable growth rate formula. 392 yes votes in the House, 92 yes votes in the Senate. That has been an enduring policy because it did have bipartisan support. All right. Is there any bill that's going to be that's going to pass muster in um, the, with the GOP in the House? Will you be able to get the Freedom Caucus on board? And if not, can you still pass it among the other remaining um, the GOP? Are there enough votes there? Well, that's that's the math exercise. And, and look, the the goal is to get as many as many Republicans onto uh, on on the same page with this. The, the American people have been pretty clear to us. Uh, and I think the other night when Senator Cruz and Senator uh, Bernie Sanders were were debating on another network the uh, the health care issue, uh, Senator Cruz correctly pointed out the election in 2010, 2014, and 2016. The American people told Republicans, "We want." this thing fixed and is, as a in, consequence in, in, fixi in fixing it seems to me there are two issues that which you know this is obviously a generalization but if you can give more services and make it cheaper i think you'll probably get the american people on board because that's what they want they don't want to they don't want to lose anything that they've already they may have already lost and they don't want to pay anymore well, Greta, that's what they told us in 2009 in those big town halls uh, when the affordable care act was coming down the pipe they said number one don't mess up what's working for now, but if you're going to do anything at all, could you please help us with costs? Well, obviously, the Affordable Care Act failed on both counts. Now it is it is our job to come in with a rescue mission can you do that? and see can if you, we can, can't see if we can't. Can you correct come up that. with that salute? Can you can you make it so it's cheaper and more service? Is that even possible? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, first off, in, in the in the reconciliation that would, that that uh, Senator Paul talked about, that that did pass in the end of 2015, uh, getting rid of the individual and the employer mandate. Well, at least under reconciliation, you do away with the penalties for those mandates, since it's primarily a, a tax vehicle. Uh, you don't do away with some of the insurance provisions because you can't actually get to those in the, in a in a reconciliation structure. Right, well, I, Probably the I, biggest I, one that you need to get to is the essential health benefits. The the ten things that every insurance policy has to have. Uh, that's one of the things that's a major cost driver going in the wrong direction. Well, I hope I hope, I hope you come back, sir, and um, as as this goes down the path, because it's enormously complicated and and also enormously important to the American people. Thank you for joining us, sir. It sure is. Thank you.